So back in here, uh, we're going to kind of do a similar thing. We want to use a debris source to create uh, more particle simulation. So I'm going to actually copy this debris source by option dragging it off to the side here and bring it down below. So we're using basically the same method of sourcing that we did before. Um, I'm going to hop out here and just uh, turn off the volumes um, on the object level. Go back down here. So we're using basically the same method as before. Uh, I just want to give my particle, I just want to add a few more particles. So I'm going to actually reintroduce the edge debris. I'm going to put down 100,000 for the edge debris just so we get more particles. And then I'm going to also increase their lifespan to 0.3 so that they um, emit for a little bit longer uh, than they originally did. Uh, let's double check. We still got our velocity attributes. That's cool. Um, but to uh, now what we can do is we can actually use this as a source for a pop sim. And Pops runs inside of uh, the SOPnet in line like we've been doing. Uh, they've had this node for quite a while and it sort of just fits in with what we're doing. So I'm just going to hit tab and type popnet. And we're going to put this debris source in the first input and highlight it. Let's go back to frame zero. And I'm just going to uh, control, control click the brain to reset it and we'll click play. You can see that uh, nothing happens. And unlike the other nodes, we don't really have any pop any pop controls exposed to us up on this SOP right here. So we do need to dive inside and work in the classic, uh, the classic sense of uh, the DOP network. So here on our pop object or on our pop source, you can see that its emission type is by default set to scatter onto surfaces. We actually want to just emit from points. We're feeding in points. We're not scattering. We're not feeding in surfaces for it to scatter on. We have more or less uh, supplied our own scatter with the debris source. So I'm going to click play on that. You can see now we are emitting particles into our pop net. I'm going to turn off the vector trails and I'm going to actually reduce the size of the points to make this a little bit easier to see. Something like one should work out good. And you can see that it is emitting um, it is emitting particles from that debris and, uh, and more or less everything's traveling very linearly because uh, it's just inheriting that velocity and uh, projecting it as such. So let's modify that velocity in coming here and allow it to uh, ha take on sort of a, a, a different type of motion, just adding a little bit more noise to it as it's being fed into our pop network. So I'm going to throw down an attribute noise. And I'm going to turn our visualization for our velocity trails back on again by hitting that one right there. And instead of by default adjusting the color, we're going to adjust the velocity. You can see there that it has slightly tweaked our velocity vectors. And what I want to do is I actually want to center the noise and I want to increase the noise's amplitude. And you can see it really starting to adjust those vectors. Um, and then I think what I might do is uh, decrease the element size so that they, it gets much more chaotic. It's just a very much more higher frequency noise. And I think a, a value that will work good is a 0.05. It's what I ended up using in my example. So now if I were to run this one into the pop net, I'm just going to turn that those vectors off again uh, so I can see my particles a little bit better and run this. You can see that we're getting a much more... Uh, a much more cloudy look to it, a much more random look to the distribution of particles coming off of this, um, off of off of this source. But it's still looking a little bit too uniform for me. So what I want to do is actually add in just a just a little line of X. I'm just a, just a teeny little line of X to kind of ramp this off a little bit, so that some particles are moving faster than others. And it's a really simple one. You just throw down an attribute wrangle. Why are this in below the noise? And what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply that noise by a random number. So we're going to multiply the vo velocity by a random number. So what I'm going to type here is at V for the velocity attribute. That's what the at symbol is symbolizing. It just wants to grab that velocity attribute. And I'm going to say times equals. That means multiply velocity by whatever I type in next. And I want that to be multiplied by a uh, ramp. So I'm making a channel ramp. I'm going to call it ramp because I can't think of anything else to call it and I want to make a ramp out of the random value of each particle so I'm going to say um, at ran or I'm going to say rand 
of at ptnum. And so if I click this little button here, since it recognized this uh, piece of text here that I'm trying to create a ramp, it is going to create this ramp down below for me that I can use to adjust those values. So if I um, hop in here and look at this, at these velocity vectors, you can see that um, if I turn the attribute wrangle off, those velocity vectors are extended. If I turn it on, they are shortened and it's really because we're able to now see if we only want to have a couple that are really long we could kind of adjust this ramp and sort of give apply some contrast to um these uh apply some contrast to our velocity vectors themselves so um if i go back to our pop net now we'll see some of the particles go flying away and some of them uh just kind of stick around and uh don't fly off so quickly you can kind of see that there. So you get a lot of randomness and, and some not so much randomness. You know, you just get a nice sort of distribution there. Um, so the next thing I want to do is because this is still pretty uniform, I want to have this all be sort of affected by that velocity that we got from that pyrosim that we had before. So the way we do that is to go in here and create a pop and vec by volumes. Pop and vec by volumes will allow you to take, you know, the velocity field from our pyro simulation and adjust this. Anyway, talk about that more in the pyro section in our in the course, but um, in here we can actually choose to import one of the inputs from the pop net. We're going to do second context geometry, and that way we can pop up here and wire in our out pyro into that second input right there. Um, and that is the second context geometry. So now if we go in here and click play. It's kind of hard to tell, but that velocity should be uh, affecting these particles themselves. And it is currently being applied as a force. I like to actually apply it as a velocity right here, like this. So I'm just going to uh, turn that back. That just is, it just is a slightly different way of calculating how um, things are working inside of the solver itself. And you can see that it is getting a much different result as these particles exit the um, domain of the pyrosim that we kind of um, built up here, which we built um, in this section right here with this box. You can see as those particles leave, they have absolutely no velocity affecting them. So we could actually use this box to kind of kill off the uh, particles that exit the domain if we wanted to or not. You know, it doesn't really matter, but um, why not? Let's just do that. I'm going to uh, actually go up here and let's let's label things nicely up here in our um, little section here. So it looks like we've got our, uh, let's start on a null. After our box, we're going to call this the... Um, This is going to be our pyro bounds. And just because I like to also name these, this is going to be our, I'm just going to copy that null over here and call this our collision geo. I like to name our collision geometry and the collision SDF uh, separately. I'm going to call this collision SDF. Sorry for the little tangent there. Now we're going to bring our pyro bounds down and wire it into the third input of our pop net. And here we can throw down a pop kill. So if we throw down a pop kill like that, wire that in after pop advec by volumes, and we can just go to the bounding section here and then choose a bounding object. And then it's looking for a SOP path. It doesn't let us choose the second input geometry or anything like that, like we did on like we did right here. It doesn't let us choose second context geometry, but we can actually just use a little expression to get that ourselves by um using a back tick and then saying op lowercase op input path open parentheses quote dot dot quote comma two close parentheses and another back tick and then you can see if i middle mouse click on this sop path it actually will unfold and show us that we are bringing in our pyro bounds so that's cool so now if i were to run this again it, uh, I think that I did this wrong. I need to actually invert this. 
Oh, and I also need to enable it. <laughs> there. Now we can see that every all the particles that are leaving this box um, are being destroyed. Nice. And uh, because this uh, object is actually set to import everything, if we did have something like a ground collider in here, um, it would actually import that as well. Just to show, I'm going to throw down an example, ground, a ground plane, and just merge this in. Roll this back and then hit play, and you can see that um, now our dotnet or our popnet is actually exporting that ground plane as well. But if we wanted to have it only export just the uh, pop object, you can see in here it's called pop object. We just copy this string, go up here, up to our popnet, and just instead of object star, which is a wildcard, basically means import everything. I'm just going to paste pop object, and you can see it gets that floor out of there. Not really necessary to do since we're not even using the ground plane. Um, but we can have the ground plane in there so that it has a little bit of collision and should make things a little bit interesting. And now in this situation, I didn't really do, uh, I didn't really add any gravity or anything because I felt that um, we were moving in slow motion. So everything being kind of weightless and just being affected by that um, velocity of that pyro field would be enough. So I think that the, we're pretty good to go with this one. I'm just going to cache it out as well. So let's start on a file cache. And I'm going to call this, let's see, actually, let's go up here and grab our string that we like to use and that, and we'll come down here and, um, paste that into the geometry file right there. And then I'm going to call this the pop sim and I'm going to just cache that out real quick. It should go pretty fast. Save to disc. All right. And that is finished caching. If I scroll the timeline, we've got that in there looking nice. Uh, I think the next thing we want to do is just export this back out um, into um, the object level like we did with everything else. So another null, purple, wire it in, call it out, out pops or particles. Nice. Let's put a nice little box around this. Um, let's do a net box around this one. We'll make it green. Whoops, not all the nodes green. Select the box and make the box green and call this particles. And then we can, um, let's also, let's jump up here and I'll just copy, I'll just copy the render volumes down and call this render particles. And then dive inside and instead of merging in our volume, I'm gonna merge in the out particles. Accept, there we go. Now we can team them all up. Maybe under our destruction, I'll enable the, I'll, I'll just set my visibility flag to this merge so I can see the T in the club as well. And now when we're up here, I'll just go back to frame one, select the, uh, let's see here, select our camera and do it just a little flip book of this to see what we're left with. And here we are with our destruction simulation that we have uh, done in line, all in one big, tall, um, all in one big, tall SOPnet. You can see it all right there. Um, all in line like that, which is really cool. Really cool new workflow um, in Houdini 18. And so at this point, this is the point where we were at more or less when we, when we um, began uh, part two of this lesson in the Stopping Freight of Houdini course, where we actually take this information out of Houdini and put it back into Cinema 4D. Uh, we take the volumes out as VDBs, we take the um, particles out, and then we also take the uh, the RBDs out and import them into Cinema 4D for rendering. So um, I hope that you found that this was exciting and helpful to understand new workflows to work with um, these type of new inline, in SOP solve, um, in SOPs, uh, dynamics networks. Um, I think that they're really handy. Um, there's been much debate about whether, <laughs> whether, uh, I go back and forth as to whether I like them or not, but I find that the more that I use them, I, the more handy they are. And the more this vertical type workflow works for me. And I hope it works for you as well. Um, but if not, you know, Houdini is a, a place where there are options. You, there's definitely more than one way to do this kind of thing. And I think it's really cool that they are pushing forward with this type of methodology to um, 
you know, kind of make things a little bit uh, more easy for different types of brains to organize their projects. So I uh, hope that you found that this was fun and um, I will catch you next time. Thanks. I'm going to start this whole thing off with three bold words. Houdini is easy. I am here to tell you that you are in the right place. Stay tuned. Do some particle simulations, some fluid simulations, just all the simulations. Let's just run this again. <laughs> For all of you who are like me, who love computers and graphics and animation, you got this! An introduction to Houdini for motion designers and Cinema 40 artists looking to expand their skills. My apologies for the lame recording. I'm making this up as I go. You really do need to know what this stuff is to do the cool things. Sooner or later, your brain is going to start making connections. You came, you conquered, you saw. And congratulations for making it this far. Why didn't I know this existed? Cheers. I'm proud of you. I'm a little bit emotional now, I'm not gonna lie. Stop being afraid of Houdini. Without further ado, let's let the learning begin.